Da 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 da. Okay, so now we can do the information of M57 as we're doing it. M57, a remarkable example of a planetary nebula. M57 is called the Ring Nebula because of its donut shape appearance. It is easy to find, but a challenge to see in binoculars. M57 is tiny, but bright. Because its brightness is spread over a small area, it is best seen under high magnification. The 14th magnitude central star, a white dwarf, is difficult to identify in smaller telescopes. Astronomers estimate that the shell of this planetary nebula was blown off about 20,000 years ago. The different colors of the shell visible in photographs represents different elements. Helium gas emits blue light oxygen emits green light, and carbon emits red light. The apparently void region between the shell and the central star is also filled with gas. This area only appears empty because it is so hot that the gas emits most of its energy as ultraviolet rays instead of visible light. One more time. We're going to read that one more time. M57 is a remarkable example of a planetary nebula. M57 is called the Ring Nebula because of its donut-shaped appearance. It is easy to find, but a challenge to see in binoculars. M57 is tiny, but bright. Because its brightness is spread over a small area, it is best, under seen, is best seen under high magnification. The 14th magnitude central star, a white dwarf, is difficult to identify in smaller telescopes. Astronomers estimate that the shell of this planetary nebula was blown off about 20,000 years ago. The different colors of the shell visible in the photograph represents different elements. Helium gas emits blue light, oxygen emits, emits green light, and carbon emits red light. The apparently void region between the shell and the central star is also filled with gas. This area only appears empty because it is so hot that the gas emits most of its energy as ultraviolet rays instead of visible light. It is a wonderful image. Well, I'm seeing 14 magnitude. Absolutely. So I know the confirmation's dead on. Yeah, I'm seeing it. That's thanks to Fred at Sun what, Sun what's Land, Sea, and Sky. Land, Sea, and Sky. Fred, if you ever need a, a, a great expert confirmation and you want to be sure, Fred at Land, Sea, and Sky. If you're listening, Fred, great job. Great job. And um, we hadn't actually been using the Celeste drawn with the new collimation, uh for a while because we did uh, install the Takahashi that was purchased uh, right away and didn't get a chance to use the uh, newly collimated uh, Celestron so uh, you're getting a treat this evening in very clear images and I'm recording it for the for YouTube and my my picture my view screen is expanded very far and it still has a wonderfully crisp colorful Im image which you tend to lose uh, clarity with the, uh, the zooming. right as you're stretching it out yeah. <coughs> Since you're hitting them right on, what's next? Uh, we'll probably uh, 27 to the neighborhood. We're at the dumbbell right here. We can probably have this if you want to. Dumbbell is that thing? 23. Yeah, it was the one. 23. Since we're in the general area, we're looking at M57 in the ring right now. We do have the dumbbell nebula, M27. Hello, Will in Redding, California. Yes, central star nice and clear. Thank you, thank you. I'm going to freeze this so they've got something to look at for a second. 
I, everything goes well. We're going to freeze this image and we're going to uh, jump over to the Dumbbell Nebula. We thank you for joining us, Will, from Reading, California. On this evening, June 23rd, Cosmic Obsession Observatory live broadcast with your verbal host, vocal host, Francis Walsh, your technical uh, telescope controller, Bob Fitzhenry, and over in the uh, personal uh, laptop play area is Debbie and Tom Ball. you're enjoying the farming videos I appreciate that uh, I have uh, had some complaints about them because you know people get so fixated on a certain thing they think that people should only be able to talk about one thing or their life should be all centered around one thing but in reality life is a combination of, of wonderful things so uh, now we got some farming and some astronomy and lots of good stuff I'm learning Purchased a hobby farm. Thank you, that Nick. You're welcome, Tom. You know, it's 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 content. It's new content. Active. I'm active. Making. If I do it, you get to see it. And I'm not fun. I'm not sitting on my hands, y'all. Nobody sits on our hands around here. We're always doing. Something. We're gonna give you some, we're gonna give you some workout equipment now, Tom. We're gonna to give you a dumbbell to work out, so you can pump it up with this with this next object, the dumbbell nebula M27. Uh, so now that you've now that we've given you the ring, we're gonna ask that you work out, and get in shape. We'll be there in just a moment. Let me go ahead and find my information on M27 so that I am right ready to give you the info news. The info news. All right. Oi. I used to sit a lot. Now I sit and walk a lot. I sit and walk and hunched over a lot. But it's fun. Keep me in shape. But we know that you do a lot more than sit around too, Pete. Though we know that you do sit around a lot, but you're also doing more than just sitting around. We're going to be bringing up M27 here shortly. Let's who, let, let me, since I have the information, let's go ahead and just uh, give you the information on M27. The Dumbbell Nebula is the brightest planetary nebula in the night sky and was also the first planetary to be discovered. It is a feast for the eyes. In binoculars, it is easy to find as a bright fuzzy patch. Through a telescope, the nebula takes on its famous hourglass or dumbbell appearance. In large instruments, M27 begins to show a trace of color. The central star is faint and hard to see. The dumbbell nebula contains multiple gas shells moving away from the central star at different speeds. An oxygen shell is moving outwards at 15 kilometers a second while a faster nitrogen shell is expanding at the rate of 30 kilometers a second. We are integrating the image 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, wha-bam! It sure is hitting them right on though, isn't it? Got him. Bang, bang, bang. And it's big. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Now work it out, Tom. Bob's going to Bob's going to resolve that dumbbell. Workout equipment.
You uh, you actually bought a farm. You bought a five acre farm, a hobby farm. <laughs> Yep, you yep. know, farms are great. I love it. Good for you. I love it. If you got if you got a farm, good for you. I want a farm. I want my own farm. It's awfully big. Why it is big, big, big. That's what you do with aperture. Big, 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 big. Working it out. I always call it the apple core. Why do I why do I why do, why do, that's part of the description. It is. I see a, I see apple core. I see more I see like it's like something I'd eat before working out. Like I, that one even looks like it's got seeds in near the center. They call that Johnny Apple Seed. So Will bought a farm. Cool. Second exposure. See, we can we can do a registax or something too. There's a there's still a lot of things that we'll we'll learn and put into practice soon enough. Uh, we can present these as non-live images because these are still live in my eyes. You know, 45 second exposure is still live for me. Uh, but we can put we can stack them live and then in five minutes present a really a better, uh, you know, a better Registack one. Live is cool. It's about as live as you're going to get. That's nice, though. Yeah, we're still pretty low on the, uh, the horizon. We're only, like, we're only like 25 degrees, right? Yeah, we need to get from 30 to 40 anyway. Live is cool. This is the uh, a Malincam Extreme. Malincam Extreme. CCD. What size is the CCD chip? Do you know what? Do you know how big the chip is? It's a half inch chip, I believe. Half inch chip. 0.5 inch. the link to okay I'll send you a link to Mellencamp if that's what you're asking who, who the maker was it's a Mellencamp Rock Melon from uh, Canada oh you got a hankering for some live broadcasting <laughs> it is nice we love it we love it. Especially you can see ours, and it's nighttime yesterday, and you're already in the daytime tomorrow, so you get, like, wonderful shots of the, of, well, northern hemisphere, northern, the dirty northern hemisphere up here. Yeah, we can learn you. We can learn you real good, real, real good, mate. We do anything for you, Pete. You're the best. Pete is the best. Astronomer, well, let me see. Pete is the best guy for me, even before I need an astronomer. No, it's you. That, that junk's good. You got good junk. Okay, enough about Pete. 